Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Rick here with Aragon Web, your home for old school Aragon reviews, and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. In our last video setting this up, we took a look and did an unboxing here of the Excite 4K Pro. Today, we're going to do a little more shooting with our S510 here. This is the S510 Tactical Regulated. Um, very, very nice air gun. Um, not my favorite because I like the Ultimate Sporter better, but this is probably a very, very, very close second. So the reason I'm getting this set up is we have a bunch of mice that are just great targets of opportunity. They're fun to go out in the middle of the night and drive around, see what you can find, and uh, take them out. Um, typical target size is about that big, it's about hamster size, so we need to be able to hit a quarter, let's just say, at, at whatever distance we're going to be shooting, gives us a really solid kill shot. In our last video, which is this, uh, we were shooting at 50 yards, and this was the 1813s, and this was the Hades. The Hades definitely get us where we need to be in that kill zone, and so I'm going to set the scope up and the rifle up to shoot the Hades. Now we were shooting a little bit high. I'll switch the reticle out to be um, not the first focal plane, but what they call a mill dot. It's got some range estimating dot dashes on it. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I may switch out to the first focal plane, but you guys won't see it. Uh, it doesn't record on the camera. It's too much processing going on. But you should be able to see this reticle, so we'll see how this goes. Before we get started, I want to say thank you to all of our sponsors, specifically for this video. We have Air Arms bringing this to you. And of course, we have JSB Predator, uh, oh gosh, I got it wrong again. Predator JSB Joe, I will get it right eventually. I don't know how you do it, but Joe like gets it perfect. But Predator JSB pellets, and um, we have ATN optics, obviously. So we're going to be shooting first at 25 yards. I want to see from our 50 zero down to our 25 what change that brings us, and what we may need to do to adjust. If I can split the difference, so if I can be just maybe just a little bit off at like within margin of error. So if my if that's my if that's my kill zone, if I can be no more than half an inch either way across, then I know that I'll be able to basically put the crosshairs on it, pull the trigger, and get a kill shot. Um, if that doesn't work, then I'll need to use the mill dots or some sort of mechanism in here, uh, whatever, whatever option there are, whatever options there are, um, to see if I can consistently put it where I need to put it depending on range. Um, I might go grab really quickly. I may go grab the bi the binocs because they actually have like a, a rangefinder built in. So let me go grab those real quick. And I think I'm about 23, 24 yards at the close target, and I know I'm at 50 on the far target. Let me go grab those. We'll verify it. We'll be right back. We'll do some shooting. Okay. So these are the ATN binocs. These are the 4K binocs. Super awesome. I love the fact that they have a rangefinder in them. And when I'm ready, oh, it's on night vision. Let's turn that off. I don't need to be using infrared <laughs> right now. Okay, there we go. Um, when I'm ready, and I probably I may get my wife to do this, or maybe my sister can go with me. But you can pair this to this, and somebody can range find, so I can get my range. Twenty-seven yards to the first target. Fifty-two yards to the second target. So we're a little bit beyond that twenty-five and fifty by two yards each. So that's fine. But um, when it's set up right, this is one of the things I want to test. I've never done it, but it's intriguing to me. You can s set your velocity and pellet weight and ballistic coefficient in the scope. Somebody here, a second party, can tag a, in a laser an object, get the get the range. It will automatically update the point of impact in your scope and you can take the shot. It's all done for you. If that works, I mean, how cool is that? I mean, that's stuff you see on TV, right? I mean, that's that's sniper stuff. Like, that's pretty cool. You, you and your buddy can go out and, you know, you can be spotting one shot and then he can be spotting the next shot and or she can be spotting the next shot, however you guys roll. And I think that's pretty stinking cool. I've not done it, but I know people that have done it. I know Angie says it works. So uh, she's the hunter amongst us. Um, I'm the paper punching target shooter, <laughs> but I want to learn how this works because that is cool. So I know that that first target is 27 yards and our second one's 52. So we can shut these down. Um, if you guys are, like the Binox, which you should like them, they're awesome. Um, they have a focus ring where you can focus and then they, the other one's an illuminator. So it, again, if you're running something like this, you have your own illuminator on it. Your, your partner can be illuminating the scene as well. It gives you more light. You get 
better visual, you, get, you know, better range, better visuals. Just a great companion product if you have somebody go out hunting with you. And they also record too, so it's pretty slick. All right, so let's go ahead and get our mag roll in here. And I'm gonna skip the 1813s. I really wanna hunt with the Hades um, because they're really devastating on small game. Let's see, we'll take a couple shots and just see where we're hitting. And I'll need to move, when we switch to the 50 yard, I'll need to move the camera. So I'll need a minute. Okay, so I am on that first target. And I am zoomed into 20 power. It looks really good in the screen. So yeah, um, I was concerned that zooming in was gonna be really, really pixelated, but it looks really good here. <laughs> Okay, left target, take a shot here. Okay, high left. Okay, so High left, we got one shot went a little higher lefter than the others, but the others weren't all essentially in the same hole. Now, I could adjust the scope to put everything dead zero here and then just hold over at 50, which I think I do better if I'm zeroed close and hold over long than if I'm zeroed long and have to guess close. I really stink at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my adjustment here. Stop the recording. And so I'm going to go into the settings, go over to um, profiles and zero, go to current, go to zero reticle, and now we're going to use one shot zero. So I leave the white crosshair on the center, and I move the green crosshair, which is my reticle, to that. Just a couple of buttons. Okay. You move the other one. To where you were hitting and then that theoretically <laughs> should work all right how should fly his route today all right so i'll start the recording make sure we're recording we've got numbers going also y'all will see now that the compass is working just some for, for whatever reason it takes a little bit and it, then it's fine so all right let's take a shot on the right target at 27 yards Yeah, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay, that was cool. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Angie, I hope you watch this video. Um, yeah, I think what we'll do is we will sight close and then hold over far. So now I'll switch my camera up. God, that was awesome. It gets to that last shot for me. I'm like, all right, you sir, don't screw it up, man. Dude, don't choke on the last shot. And thank you, Air Arms. We didn't choke. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna set up at the 52 yard target which is on here all out of focus. Let me show you what happens. I think you guys will capture this. I'm gonna focus that, okay? So I am zoomed in, I'm just gonna focus. There it is. Now it's really pixelated, so let me zoom out. Okay, that looks really clean. Now when we zoom in, it flies again. Okay, there we are, that's 50 yards. Now, I don't know where we're gonna land, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, so let me go change the camera. Um, I'm gonna load up another mag. I'll do that first, I guess. Then change the camera, take some more shots, and then I think we'll be good to do some. We'll be good to do some hunting. I really love the one shot zero, dude. That's awesome. Just a little adjustment, and bang, you're on it. Gosh, that's cool. Oh, I gotta zoom it. I gotta focus again to see my handiwork. God, that looks pretty. Okay, back out to the 50. 
Okay, we're set. It is pixelated on the scope, but it actually looks pretty good. It's not like blocky pixelated, which I've had some other digital, you know, digital scopes that are, when you zoom in all the way, all the way, there's an unusual, unusable. This is usable. I don't know how the video is going to turn out, but it looks good here. I can see what I'm doing, which is awesome. Let me move the other camera. Okay, so time is sort of of the essence today. I'm kind of under a deadline. Normally, I'd run that camera out to the 50 yards, so it's super clear. But I just I'm I'm back here at the at the bench. So that target in that camera is a little bit fuzzy because I'm using digital zoom on the camera. So I ask you to just forgive that. Um, and we'll get back to running the cameras out here next time around. But I've got a video due tomorrow, so I need to get this done. Okay, we're gonna take a shot here. Um, I'm guessing we're gonna go with the left target. I'm guessing that the second dash is about where we're gonna be. Way right. We do have a little right to, uh, left to right breeze, but I can't imagine it pushing it that hard. Well, oh, man, maybe it is. Okay, so at 50 yards, I'm way off. I'm going to switch reticles. Okay, I'm going to aim dead center, but I don't know. If I hit there, I'm just going to look through the scope. I'm going to start this recording so you guys can see sort of looking at what I'm thinking. On my screen, I am about... Almost like I'm um, like three quarter mil to the right and like a quarter mil high. For me, out in the woods, I can just tell you, I'm, I'm not going to get that right. I'm not going to be able to hit that um, and be able to be on target. I just, I'm not that good with uh, Kentucky windage or mill dots. So I would almost need to kind of know my distance. I'd have to go scout. Like if I'm going to sit here and the mice are going to be there because they're always in sort of the same area. So I kind of could do that. If not, I'm gonna have to get really good with guessing. Um, so let me see, let me just see what I can do here. Um, all right, I'm still recording. I'm gonna take one shot dead center on the right target. Okay, a little right. Okay, I wonder, sometimes your scope's canted, it can throw you off a little bit. I might be slightly canted, so I may need to do some, some adjustments. I would love to be able to just hold over. I don't, I can maybe adjust one direction, but two directions, I can just tell you I'm not that good. I'm not gonna do it. Um, Right, I'm gonna switch radicals again. Stop recording. Radical style, shape. And I wonder if my little circle dot will be friendly to me. Let me see. That's not going to work. I'm going to go back to my first sort of mill dot. And that is, well, I might could use that. I'm going to give that a shot. 
All right, I'm going to use that right target again. No, actually, I'm going to use the left target because there's no holes down low. I'm going to try and put them in the center-ish area. We're recording. Okay, so the next video, I'm before the next video, I'm going to see if I'm canted because if I'm just rotated even slightly, then it'll kick your it'll kick your shots out to the right when you when you start going out further. So I'll need to check that. Well, if I have it canted the way I'm thinking, it's going to kick it out to the right. All right, so I'm going to use the. Okay, let me see if I can explain this. There's the main main crosshair, right? And then there's one that's just a little bit below it. And then there's a bigger gap. The one that's just a little bit below it, I'm going to use that. And I'm going to aim just left of the bowl. Yeah. Not drifting left to right. We have wind coming behind us now, instead of right, uh, left to right. There it is. I may not be canted. It may just have been wind pushing it. may have just been wind actually because it died down started coming from behind us and now all of a sudden I'm in line so it didn't look crooked to me but I'm pretty good at that but I, I can make mistakes like everybody all right so I'm gonna be on the bottom end of the reg here but I'm gonna move back over move back over to the right target uh, these flies are bad today and I'm going to try and put it in the red. I can adjust. I hold over. I can do is when you have to go two different directions. That's. I just don't have that skill set yet. I know others do. Like Ted, guys, he's awesome, right? All right. So I'm going to aim dead center, but I'm going to go a little higher. So I'm going to split the difference between the two mills or the two dashes below the crosshair. All right. That's going a little left. All right. Well, we just have to keep our shots closer. Oh, that was nice. Also, good trigger control helps. <laughs> Good. I'm out. Okay, we're out. We're off the reg anyway. I think that last shot was a little low. Yeah, we're at 100 bar. So we're we're we were we were running on fumes there. Um, okay. So I guess this is what I learned today. Uh, up close, we're deadly. I mean, I'll go grab those targets just to, to have some pictures so you guys can see them. But um, yeah, that second group at 27 yards. Oh, yeah. I almost would say let's zero this at 35 yards and call it a day. Um, and then, you know, if something presents a little further, I can hold over just a smidge or something. But 
Um, yeah, that's stinking awesome. The other thing I could do is get chair gun out and uh, figure out what the optimal zero is. And then kind of set it for that, and then I'd have a range with I'd be in my kill zone. But I think I'd rather just drill the center if I can if I can get that dialed in. I think the wind was shifting a little bit, pushing us a little left to right. But all in all, I mean, at 50 yards, I'd probably still be okay. Um, I just use the the space between the two hashes below the uh, mill, and I'd be all right, be okay. That's gonna be it. I, I think. I want to do a little more testing um, and maybe shoot some at night, come out here at night and shoot, which will be really cool. And then we'll look to maybe do some hunting. But all in all, super fun, had a great time, really love this setup. It looks really freaking cool too, doesn't it? So I want to say thank you to Air Arms. I want to say thank you to at and Optics, Predator JSB. There you go, Joe, your 15 cents. Every time we say it, you get paid. Um, Predator JSB pellets. He does it. I'm just, keep, just teasing. Um, and yeah, that's going to do it. If you guys want to know anything about the stuff you see here, I'll have links in the video description. So that's going to be it for now. Thank you guys for watching and please subscribe. And if you haven't seen Aragon Expo, uh, go check it out. It was a great week. Almost, I think we topped out at 48 or 50 pieces of content within a week. It's all on our website. So you can go check it out, thearagonexpo.com. We will be editing a lot of the lives. So we'll add some, some titles and pictures and that kind of stuff in there to make them a little bit, uh, spruce them up a little bit. Um, but yeah, you guys, please go check it out. It was a really cool week and I want to thank, say thank you to all of our sponsors that helped us do it. So that's going to be it for now. My name is Rick Kutzer here with Airgun Web, your home for old school Airgun reviews and we'll retell you the facts, not fluff. Thanks for watching.